Many designers actually consider themselves advanced designers, but they fail to understand and acknowledge what we're going to talk about in today's course. The reality is that most graphic designers are either beginner or intermediate, and there's actually nothing wrong with that, but we want to level up, and that's what we're going to look at right now. Being an advanced level designer doesn't mean you become a pro with the pen tool in Illustrator or that you can design 10 logos in a single day. The advanced designer dives deeply into visual communication and design psychology, and they really tap into the minds of the people they're designing for. The advanced designer can actually walk into any client pitch with confidence, and that's because he or she knows exactly why they made design choices, and they know how the designs will evoke specific responses within targeted audiences. So let's look at how that, and a lot more, can be achieved. All projects start with a brief, right? Everybody knows that. And from there, we move on to concept creation and ideation. But advanced designers, they want to expand on briefs and use them in ways that other designers just simply don't know about. The brief is important, sure, but it should be a stepping stone to greater things. And no, I don't simply mean mind mapping. Yes, that is a helpful tool, but advanced designers use briefs in slightly different ways. Now, there are many different ways how reverse thinking is beneficial in the early stages of a design project. You should, of course, identify goals in a design project and the brief, but also try this. Rather than focusing only on achieving the intended goal, think about inverting that goal. This can obviously highlight some potential pitfalls in the project, but importantly, it can also lead to different concepts and a different way of thinking. Let me explain. Say for example, you're designing a logo or brand identity for a luxury fashion house. You might determine then that the goal should be to target elegance, sophistication, and exclusivity. However, if we invert this, we can think along the lines of boldness, simplicity, and accessibility. Of course, you need to question whether or not the design will appeal to the target audience in the brief. But inverting the goal in your briefs or projects can lead to some very out of the box kind of creations and concepts. And this is often what separates an intermediate designer from an advanced designer. Another huge part of reverse thinking is to think from the audience's perspective. Now this involves that you think or imagine you are the target audience of your project. And then you need to kind of identify what would annoy you and what would maybe not work for you. Here's a prime example. Let's say a designer is working on creating packaging for a new line of organic skincare products targeted towards consumers who are environmentally conscious. The designer might get carried away with the visual appeal of the design, which is fine, but that's mainly intermediate stuff. Advanced designers would understand how strongly the audience is environmentally conscious, and so they decide to use eco-friendly materials for the packaging such as recyclable or biodegradable materials. They also incorporate minimalist design elements that convey a sense of purity and naturalness. Additionally, they might add information about the product's organic ingredients and the brand's commitment to sustainability. And they do this because they know this information will resonate with their audience and they will make that very apparent on the packaging. This design will now be elevated to an advanced level because of how well it targets a specific group of people. This is reverse thinking because most designers out there think about a design or a project from the designer's point of view. They fail to recognize it from the target audience's perspective. When coming up with ideas and concepts, there is one thing advanced designers simply just love to utilize in the concept creation stages, and that is metaphors. Metaphors provide connections between seemingly non-connected objects or subjects, and that can provide a novel way to make a design concept. So let's say an intermediate designer is tasked to design an awareness poster about the spread of viruses. The poster aims to emphasize how using soap and washing your hands is important. They might jump to the idea of showing someone simply just washing their hands. The design is just forgettable, but moreover, kind of boring. The advanced designer might very well think in terms of metaphors in the concept creation process. They may take the word or concept of soap and then bring that to memory or thinking about washing hands. And that might result in a bold and a clean design like this, one of creating a brain out of bars of soap, quite literally. 
the minimal and clean typography just below it is enough for people to get the message in a single glance. Metaphors should be a great addition to your workflow and your processes when making concepts and designs. Often in the world of design, advanced thinking does actually mean taking risks. You should be pushing yourself to step out of your comfort zone and explore new ideas even if they feel unfamiliar at first. And here's a great example. Say you're hired to design something for a local music festival celebrating the diversity of different kinds of music. You may start to think about creating leaflets, flyers and a website, but that is an intermediate way of going about this. Sure, those materials are useful and likely probably necessary, but we can take things further. Notice how the brief mentions a local music festival, emphasis on the word local. An advanced designer might pick up on this and decide to take the risk of proposing a concept that involves collaborating with local graffiti artists to create a series of large scale art installations inspired by different music genres. These installations would serve as both promotional visuals and interactive elements at the festival. And seeing as the festival is local, the vast majority of people who see these installations will be relevant to the target audience. Bingo. The graffiti artists will be given creative freedom to explore their style and their perspective on the project, and that's where some of the risk does come into play. But it's a great concept as part of this campaign. Another great way to come up with great ideas and concepts is to focus on the emotions that you know you need to actually convey to the audience. This leads to designs and solutions that don't only look good, but they really resonate with a specific target group of people. And that's part of what we're gonna look at in the next module, module two. So the next module is based around creating visual narratives within your design work. And we're going to do that by thinking about your audience's emotions and the personalities among other things. Now it sounds pretty complicated, I bet, but don't worry about it. It will be simple soon enough. Before creating a visual narrative, we need to define the message of the project. It will pave the way to our concepts and design solutions. You need to ask yourself, what is the core message of your design? It might be to create a positive change in the viewer, or perhaps a new car that takes a driver off road to locations they've never seen before. Find the deep hearted message that your design aims to get across. And this can often be put into one sentence. Something else linked to the message is to define the tone of the message itself. Understand the tone of the message, you know, it might be serious, it might be playful, it might be informative, and knowing the tone will set the foundation for your design. So for example, if the message of the design is to promote awareness of the dangers of texting while driving, a big no-no, you'd probably want the tone of the message to be serious. Advanced designers know the message, the core message, and also the tone, and this then determines the visual language moving forward, something we're gonna build later. Another element we're going to look at, which is hugely powerful, is the ability to determine the emotional response you want to elicit from your audience. Whether it's trust, nostalgia, excitement, whatever it is, align it with the archetype of your target audience. So heading back to the design, giving awareness to the dangers of texting while driving, we likely don't want to utilize curiosity or nostalgia. We probably want to leverage the emotion of fear or maybe shock. And that's because this will align a lot better with the core message and also the tone, importantly the tone. So as you can see, we're building a visual narrative or a visual language. And for the narrative, we want to first think about color. Color is so vastly important in graphic design, it should never be taken lightly, not even by advanced designers. Thinking about the three things we've just spoken about, the message, the tone, and the emotional goal, consider how to utilize color palettes in regards to those three things. So if you decided the tone of your design should be quiet, then consider lowering the saturation of your color palettes, or even just going all out with pastels. If your message is one that aims to sell insurance to elderly people, then reassuring color palettes that are calm likely will be a good idea. When it comes to emotion, you can revert to color psychology for pretty good results. But be careful here because cultural context can play a big role in your design. Red in the Western world can suggest danger and passion, but in China, it's a strong color of fortune and luck. So in summary about color, think about the message, the tone, and also the emotion, and then work that into color palettes. This is the first step towards forming a visual language or narrative. 
typography is where things can go really right or really, really wrong. But of course, advanced designers rarely get it wrong. We want to choose fonts that align with the audience's identity and the design's message tone. Different typefaces evoke different feelings. For example, a sleek sans serif font might convey modernity and professionalism, while handwritten script fonts could evoke more personal or artistic vibes. Being able to match a typeface style to emotion is a huge part of making a visual language in graphic design. It's something advanced designers do just so well. So you should familiarize yourself with the different styles of typefaces out there. Also consider limiting the number of fonts to maintain consistency on your designs. Typically speaking, using two or three fonts within a single visual language provides a variety without overwhelming the design or the audience. Using symbolism is a very creative way and an essential way to build a strong visual narrative or language on your graphic design projects. Symbolism involves the use of visual elements such as icons, images and shapes, and this conveys deeper meanings in the message. A prime example of a top-class symbolism design is the Nike logo. Nike's iconic symbol is the swoosh, it's just a typical like checkmark shape. The swoosh symbolizes movement, speed, and victory. It's a powerful and a versatile symbol that captures the essence of athletics, and the brand's tagline, just do it. Each moving part of your visual narrative should work really well together, kind of like a team, or the perfect dream team. The Nike logotype is in italics and it's bold, and this suggests movement because of the shape slants towards the front, and it also commands authority and modernity. The tagline itself is active and bold in tone, and so is the visual imagery of people moving in sporty-like situations that we see across their marketing. Every single element of the visual language has been well thought out and tailored towards a specific brief and audience. So here's a true weapon that you should be adding into your arsenal of design tools. ChatGPT is so awesome when it comes to helping you define and create your visual languages and your design narratives. If we're working on a design for a poster that is aimed at vegans, we can type in crucial information and ask ChatGPT to suggest ways that we can use typography to psychologically target that sort of person. And it's not just a simple prompt that we want to be using here. We want to utilize ChatGPT to work for us as a co-designer or creative director, if you will. And if you haven't done already, do check out my list of 60 download prompts for ChatGPT because you won't be disappointed when using them in your projects. There's even a mini tutorial and a sneak peek at the sort of way I do use ChatGPT myself in graphic design projects. To demonstrate how a finished visual language looks and operates in real life, let's jump into the world of the FedEx brand. Now the visual language used within the brand's identity of FedEx is a prime example of how simple design elements can convey powerful messaging. Firstly, the logo contains hidden symbolism in the way the arrow is hidden in the lettering. The arrow suggests a forward motion and fast delivery, which is great for a delivery kind of business, of course. Their logo type is made up of Futuro Bold, which is a forward-thinking and modern sans-serif font. The brand uses the same color scheme throughout its identity and the materials they make, that being orange, purple, and also a splash of white. Orange is an energetic color that suggests action, and this matches up with the motion aspect of the arrow and the design in general. Purple is a complementary colour to orange, and it can suggest calmness. This might give confidence in people who use their service. The symbolism, the typeface use, the colour scheme, and the style is consistent throughout the entire brand's identity. The message and the tone we can take from the language is modern, forward-thinking, reliable, and fast. They are professional and somewhat serious, but at the same time approachable. Every design choice can be relayed back to these things, the message, the tone, and the goal. Now the next module is stepping into an area of design that almost nobody thinks about or uses in this design industry. It's just the very top of advanced designers who work this into their projects. To properly use multi-sensory design, you need to first identify the target audience and their sensory preferences. You should know the target audience of your design early on in the project, and that's through research. But once you've defined that, think about how to tailor the design to evoke the desired emotional responses and engagement level through a number of five different senses, which we're going to look at right now. 
And this is where the fun begins. As you know, the five senses are sight, touch, taste, smell, and sound. And the sixth sense being a classic Bruce Willis movie. Now, if you can trigger these senses with your design, in accordance to the brief, the message, the tone, and all that good stuff, your design will be heaps more effective at getting to that goal. And here are some real examples of how that might look. You might be working on packaging for a fruit flavored juice drink and to trigger the audience's taste buds, you can use color choices to create cross sensory associations. For instance, using vibrant and refreshing shades of citrus colors like orange and yellow can visually evoke the taste of tangy and juicy fruits like oranges or lemons. This matched up with imagery of fruits might be getting your taste buds going right now. This works because colors have the power to evoke specific emotions and associations within people. By selecting colors that align with the flavor profile of the product, the designer creates a visual cue that prompts the viewer to anticipate the taste experience. Pretty cool. Another good example is where a designer might be working on some kind of design for a coffee shop. The choice of typography can be used to create a cross sensory association with the aroma and flavor of freshly brewed coffee. The designer might choose a warm, creative and inviting typeface that visually resembles the swirls and steam of rising coffee vapor. Typography can evoke emotions and sensory experiences beyond just visual elements. In this case, the chosen typeface's visual cues, such as the curves and the flow, mirror the sensory experience of the aroma wafting up from a cup of coffee. That will happen subconsciously within audiences. And when matched up with everything we spoke about in the visual narrative communication part of this course, the design just becomes ultra effective. You can also think about actual sound as well though. Imagine you're working on a video or a website that's meant to suggest a blissful kind of approach, but it's targeted at younger, more kind of urban audiences. The music you use matched with the color palettes is going to be a crucial choice and it needs to be really well thought out. So yeah, think of ways that you can tap into your audience's sensory mindset and then consider if you can use that to your advantage to enhance the experience and make your design message more effective. Now here's a really important piece of information you want to keep in mind. As you can see from the modules in this course, being an advanced designer isn't about mastering the tools or making something quote unquote look good. It involves understanding your audience in a very specific way and coming up with the original ideas that make a whole bunch of sense. But here's something really good to know. If you logically work through your briefs and your projects like how we've spoken about in today's course, then pitching to a client, pitching your concepts should be a breeze. And that's because you have so much information and so much kind of data to back your reasoning on. Pretty hard to argue against that from a professional point of view. You don't need to be a master advanced level designer to make money or a living in this industry. It's all relative, of course. But if you want to take yourself beyond an intermediate designer, then I suggest bookmarking this course and maybe coming back to it in the future. But if you want to expand your knowledge right now, then just click the video on screen. And until next time, guys, design the future today. Peace.